Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is Corsair's Glaive RGB Pro. This is a new gaming mouse from Corsair that's designed for FPS and MOBA gaming with interchangeable grips. This is an updated version of a mouse that I've tried previously that you'll see compared in this video side by side, and I'm quite pleased to say that this is one of my favourite gaming mice. It is a wired mouse, it's not wireless like the previous Corsair mice that I've unboxed and reviewed. However, I don't let that put you off because the Glaive RGB Pro is fairly interesting and very comfortable. And comfort is important, I think I discussed that in the previous unboxing I did of the Iron Claw. And the Glaive is wonderful in that way because it has these interchangeable grips which we'll see in a minute. It basically means that you can customise the design of the mouse to fit your own preference. Now I really like the wide thumb rest option on this one but obviously what you prefer is going to be up to you and there are three interchangeable grips that attach with a magnetic plate which I'll show you in a little while. The other highlights and differences between this mouse and the previous version seem to be, as far as I can tell, an increased DPI level. So the previous Glaive mouse had a max level of 16,000, this has 18,000. It also has two DPI buttons instead of just one. So the previous mouse had a single button that you press to cycle through the DPI levels. This one has up and down buttons essentially. What that does mean is you now get more customizable buttons. So there are seven possible programmable buttons with this mouse, more than the previous model, because you can program those DPI buttons to be whatever you want. It also has three RGB lighting zones on the Corsair logo on the side strip and at the front. And here you can see the mouse as it is coming out of the box. Nice braided cable, which I'll also notice has been updated, and I'll show you a comparison of that in a bit. And then the interchangeable thumb plates. The one on the left is my favourite. Gives you a nice wide bit of space to rest your thumb on when you're gaming, which is great for me because I'm a bit of a clumsy buffoon, if you've not noticed from previous videos. So I like to have a nice comfortable setup. The mouse itself, as with all Corsair mice, is understated for the most part, nicely designed and comfortable in the hand. It has a nice lot of design features to it. I often feel like Corsair mice initially appear a bit cheap in a design, they're quite plasticky, they might not strike the eye quite like other mice or perhaps feel as much heft in your hand. However, the quality is undeniable. I've been using Corsair mice for many years and the Glaive, as I said, was one of my favourite mice before. And it's actually really affordable as well, considering that. A wired mouse, obviously, is a bit cheaper than the wireless versions out there as well. So the Glaive is at around £60, I believe. Maybe slightly less. And at that price point, it's actually a very appealing option. You can see it has these large thumb buttons on the side, as well as the swappable grips. The front lighting, a nice textured mouse wheel, a very thick premium braided cable. So here you can see the two compared. On the left hand side is the original Glaive, which is filthy, because I'm an animal. I like to eat while I game. And on the right is the brand new fresh out of the box Glaive Pro. You'll note there doesn't appear to be that many differences. As you can see, as I said, there are now two DPI buttons on top, but you still get the same five levels of DPI and the LED indicators for that, which I'll show you in a little while. You will note, however, there is a slight difference, not just because it's messy, but in the USB setup. So you note on the old mouse, there was quite a chunky USB attachment. The new one seems a bit slimmed down and perhaps a bit snazzier looking, less in your face. The braided cable also feels a little bit thicker, maybe more premium. Could be my imagination, but that's what it felt like to me. But generally, you struggle to tell these two apart if they were plugged in. 
apart from one's filthy. And a quick close up of the thumb plates. Easily removable. You can see how they attach here. Basically, just they don't even clip in. They've got clips on them, but there's strong magnets in that pull them into place, and then they just lock in, and it's nice and easy to use. If you're wondering why I've not peeled off yet, it's because I wanted to do those beach shots that you saw at the beginning, and I didn't want to get sand all over it. Now you cannot, unfortunately, and I wish this was a thing, remove the other side. If you could have adjustable grips on both sides, it'd be a way. That was one of the reasons I really liked the Dark Core mouse, was the fact that it had this rest on either side. So you've got a rest for your pinky and for your thumb. Obviously it depends on your preference, how you grip your mouse, the size of your hand and all those things. You know, for my personal preference, I've got quite large hands. And they usually fit over mice and then fingers and thumbs get in the way while gaming, which is not ideal. So having a good rest is always welcome. Now the glaive is very comfortable for that. It's a nice, good size and that thumb rest is fantastic. Here you can see the RGB lighting once it's plugged in. As I said, you've got that strip down the side, the Corsair logo. You can also see the DPI lights there. Now you can also customize those within the software and I'll show you that in a bit. And here on the front you see the forward facing lights. Now this RGB lighting isn't over the top. When it gets starts to get dark it's just a subtle strip down the side. It's not too obnoxious. Actually you do see a bit of light bleed from the right hand side of the mouse as well down that side but for the most part if you're a right-handed gamer like I am, then you're going to see what you're meant to see, which is the, the strips down the side of the Corsair logo. You can see the floor, the future floor to the thumb grip is the rubberized textured grip ends up with dirt ingrained in it. And you won't believe how often I'm cleaning that and it's still filthy. That's the new, the new one, obviously a lot cleaner. Take better care of your stuff. Don't eat in game. Here you can see the DPI levels going up and down, and it's interesting, as default, there's only three DPI levels set within the Corsair IQ software, so you can only get up to level three and then back down again. You cannot push past it, but it's easy enough. Download that software, install it, and get your settings going, and you, then you can change those levels to hit that maximum, 18,000, which is, by the way, is just insane. That's far too high. Corsair Glaive RGB Pro now tops out as one of my favourite wired mouse as an update to the previous favourite wired mouse. And they also recommend the MM350, which is a new Champion Series premium anti-fray gaming cloth surface, which I'm also unboxing as a surprise treat halfway through this video. This is a large mouse mat surface that takes up quite a good portion of the desk but wouldn't be enough to go under the keyboard so you need to make sure you had enough room for it on your desk but if you wanted a high quality premium cloth surface to play on then Corsair MM350 is well worth a look. As you can see it is nicely understated and it just features the Corsair logo neatly embroidered on the corner. Gives you plenty of room, as you can see, with the mouse on there. And if you consider you've got 18,000 DPI potentially, you don't actually need to move the mouse that much if you crank it up that high. But it is a really high quality product. As to be honest, you expect from Corsair's products anyway, in general. Another highlight to the design of this mouse is those large thumb buttons are very comfortable and easy to access because you can program them with anything you want, macros, other button presses or whatever, and you can really get a good experience with FPS games if you need to switch quickly. I really like that design, I like easy access thumb buttons. 
and to be able to have such large texture buttons that are there and are easy to feel when you need to in the heat of battle is really beneficial. Now diving into the IQ stuff where you can see the Glaive RGB Pro sitting up here and it's the usual setup so you can add actions, record macros, set specific button presses, change the various buttons on the mouse. As I said there's seven programmable buttons so that gives you a lot of options. You can change those to whatever you want. In the lighting effects section you can see you've got the lighting edge, front zone and logo zone and you can cycle through various different settings in there including the lighting link to cycle while synced with other Corsair devices including keyboard, and case fans and things like that and obviously you can choose from a variety of different colour gradients and set it the way you want it. You also get a preview of this within the software so you can see what it's going to be like. You don't have to keep looking down at your mouse. And there are a multitude of options. I personally like a good static colour, but if you want something that reacts nicely to what you're doing, then there's another option. Now into the DPI, the, the default settings, as I said, actually two of them are turned off, so you can only see three. I've already tweaked this settings a little bit. And... That view is normally what you'd see, so you'd see three levels, and it's only set to 5,000 something as the top end, so if you want to go higher, you can either adjust the standard three levels to the way you want them, or you can open up the other ones and set them even higher. You can also set a sniper mode to engage that, so you'd set a button to put sniper mode on, turn that on, and you'd have a much lower DPI. You can also set the colour of the DPI indicator to different colours as well, so you can customise that lighting too. We have to do it from there rather than from the lighting effects panel. Now just quickly show you those changes as I cycle through the different lighting effects and see how that reacts on the mouse. It actually gives a really nice glow to it, but really subtle. Like the front lights, you rarely see because it's facing forward and it's not something you look. You spend time looking at the front of your mouse. So I really, do, I just don't find them obnoxious. It's just subtle and beautiful lighting. And here you can see the standard DPI lights, and you can set them up in the various levels. But you can also change those colors to whatever you want, whether you want to match it or you want it to stand out. So if you had one specific color that you wanted to use, for example, if you want to switch to red, obviously that stands out. If you've got it on blue, and then you won't confuse the two lights if you quickly glance in to see what level you're on. And I really like the DPI indicator on this. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it useful, interesting, or humorous, or all of the above. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up, and also drop me a comment and let me know what you liked. And if you really didn't like it, please let me know the reasons why as well, with constructive feedback that I can use to improve my future videos. Any feedback is always appreciated. And if you have the time, please consider subscribing to my channel so you get to see more awesome content from me in future. I'm always looking to grow my follower base and also to keep carrying on producing interesting content on a variety of gaming peripherals, game videos, tips, tricks, unboxings and all sorts of other things. Let me know what you like from my channel and if there's anything you'd like to see more of. Thanks very much for your time. Have a great life.